Hi guys, today we're going to be reviewing the BenQ EW3280U 4K monitor. BenQ say it's their entertainment monitor, so an all-rounder you could say. So could this monitor cover all your needs from general office workstation usage to gaming and movies? In terms of pricing, looking on Amazon, the 32-inch model, the one we're reviewing, it retails at the moment for $579.99 in the UK. And there is another variant, which is a 27 inch, and that's coming in at $449.99. So let's take a look and see how good this monitor really is. Now the packaging for the monitor comes with the following items, including the monitor. So let me quickly run through them one by one. In terms of documentation, you get important safety instructions, quick start guide, and service information. You get a CD containing user manual and drivers. You get two power cables, one's for the EU and it's 140 centimeters, and one's for the UK and that's 175 centimeters. Connection on there to the monitor is the one you'd use on a PC, just to show. You get a Type-C cable and the length for this is 94 centimeters. You get a HDMI cable and the length for this is 170 centimeters. You get a remote control and a bit of silicon to actually place the remote control on. You get two components for the stand and looking underneath you've got four rubber pads on this and that's what the base is. And then this part here locks onto that and then the monitor sits on this area here. Now take a look at the monitor itself. You've got a thin bezel on the three sides. Bottom area has a thicker bezel. You can see the finish over here. Some people call it a bronze finish, but it's really more of a brown finish along the bottom here. You can see the two speakers located either side here. BenQ logo over here and a logo saying HDRI. Coming in the middle here looks like some sort of sensor or IR pickup point. Now coming over to the back of the monitor, matte black finish all the way around. You've got a subwoofer just over here. And that's where it's a bit of a novelty with this particular monitor because it comes with a 2.1 sound system built in. And it's by a company called Trivolo, it says over here. And then we've got some branding just over here. And then coming down here, you've got a flap. And if I open that up, it shows the VESA mounting point there. So you've got four screws already in there. So it's just a matter of taking them out, putting your mounting plate on there and putting the screws back in and then obviously mounting it. Now in terms of weight, the TV comes in at 8.1 kilograms. So with that weight in mind, I thought it would have been more sense to give a larger mounting size on this. Now coming onto the bottom left hand corner, you've got a toggle here and just controls to go through the options and make adjustments. But the nicety about this monitor, obviously you get a remote control so you don't have to reach behind to go through these options if you didn't want to. Now coming on to the connection points here, you've got a headphone jack here, two HDMI connection points, display port connection, and a Type-C connection point. Power's plugged in just over here, and it's good it doesn't have a power adapter, so you can just plug the cable straight in, you don't have anything else dangling off there. Then you've got a Kensington locking point here, and speaker control just down here. Now to set up the stand, it's very easy, you take the bottom part here, and the arm piece, and coming in close, you just slot it in, and then just lock it into position. And then this can be just pushed back and that's the bottom bit done. Next, to install the arm. It's just a matter of taking it here at the back and slotting it in. And then tightening the two screws either side. Now coming over to the back of the arm here, if I push that up, it opens up and you've got some cable management to feed your cables in. I'm gonna place in, obviously, the power to power it up, type C, and a HDMI in there. So it is just a matter of feeding it through the hole there. Then you've got these areas just to hold onto the cable, put my type C cable through, and then finally my HDMI. So there you go, the three cables have been fed in, and you can see for yourself, the cable management side is quite tight in here. So if you did wanna put in two additional cables or three more, it could get quite tight in this area. And then once you've got your cables in, just put the plate back on and push it down and it locks into position. Now in terms of adjustments on the monitor itself, there's no option to height adjust it, only tilt options available and the furthest it can go back, as you can see, is like so, and then bringing it back again, that's what it's like. Also, you can't rotate it either, so you've got it in landscape mode at the moment, so you can't turn it into portrait mode. So for such an expensive monitor, I'm surprised that's not available. Now in terms of the silicon block you get as a tray for the remote, the way it's been designed, it's got a slight angle on there, as you can see. And if I place it like this, 
you see it sticks up at one end. So the way they've designed it, so it just slots into place like so. And you just put your remote on. You can move it along obviously and put it into position how you'd like. Now the monitor, as I've already mentioned, is a 4K monitor and it's got an IPS panel on there. And what that means, if you come in at an angle, picture quality is still really good on here. And I'll just show from the top as well. Distortion wise, very minimal. Now the resolution given off my laptop onto the screen is 4K at 60 Hertz. Picture quality is absolutely stunning. I've just got a wallpaper on the screen here. But do note, if you do have an older device, it may not be able to cope with going up to 60 Hertz. So keep that in mind. Now in terms of using this monitor for general office use, so word processing, spreadsheets, or even presentations, it provides ample space for ease of working, allowing you to have two applications open side by side. Now looking at Word and Excel, I found you could easily open up documents and have three pages visible at any time. So quite nice having that much of an area to work with. In terms of video editing, it works pretty well because of the viewing space you have. But for me personally, I prefer dual screen setup so I can have the video playing on one screen and edit on the other. So for me, I would use this monitor to edit and have a separate monitor to play the video on. Now in terms of video playback, I've started up a YouTube video on our other channel called Geek Street Travels and it's a 4K video filmed on a GoPro and you can see for yourself, picture quality is absolutely stunning on here. And in terms of volume control, obviously I've mentioned the adjuster here. You can adjust the volume quite easily. It is a little bit slow to go up. You can see for yourself, I'm probably going up three or four every turn. But convenient having a toggle like this to increase the volume on here. My other monitor is a Acer monitor and it's got some selectors on here and it just drives me nuts. Obviously, if you get the option wrong, you'll go into contrast or brightness settings. So quite nice having a separate control just for the volume on here. Now, one of the things I really like about this monitor is the fact it comes with a remote. Obviously, you've got the controls at the back of the monitor just to make your adjustments, but it's always nice to have the remote and it's a bit of a novelty having that. So it gives you quick access to the menu options. So I'll click there, you can see just appear and you can toggle between the options there. And together with that, obviously you can change the source on here too. And other options just below that. So nice and convenient to use. In terms of the menu options available, I'll briefly go through the options. Won't go into too much detail, just click through them just to give you an idea what's available there. Quite a lot's available and like I've already mentioned, going through with the remote, it's just so much easier to work with rather than messing around, putting your hand behind the monitor, pressing the wrong button half the time anyway. So nice to have that facility available. Now in terms of speakers, I've already mentioned you've got two speakers at the front there and a subwoofer at the back. And in terms of sound quality, probably the best I've heard from a monitor. Generally monitor speakers are rubbish, absolutely rubbish to the point of there's just tinny sound coming out of it. So this is a big improvement, not amazing sound like you get out of a surround sound system or anything like that, but still much better than what you'd get on a standard monitor. Now coming over to different audio scenarios, we've got live pop, cinema, dialogue, vocal, game, rock, party. So let me play some music at maximum and I'll flip between the different options and you can hear for yourself the difference in sound quality between the options. <laughs> Very subtle differences between the different levels on here. There's no bass, mid-range and treble options as I could see. So that's the only sort of function that you've got to flip between. Sound levels are okay, like I've said, it's not too bad, but you could hook it up to a separate sound system just to enhance it even more. Now the volume control here obviously just adjusts the volume on the speakers there. 
that doesn't impact the volume that's on your computer there. So if I plugged in my laptop, it's not adjusting it directly on the laptop. It's just controlling the speakers on the monitor itself. So what I've done, I've taken up the volume to maximum on the monitor. I've got my sound level meter here as well. Let's play some music at maximum and see what the levels we're gonna get out of this from our sound level meter here. And the sound level meter is about 30 to 40 centimeters away from the speakers there. So now if I hit play, So we've got 83 decibels on there and the sound quality wasn't bad at all. Now the monitor has Brightness Intelligence Plus technology built in. So the sensor's just over here and I've got a light in my hand. If I bring that in close, what it does, it tries to adjust brightness levels and some of the color settings. And you can see the sensor come on there. Now if I take it away, levels will adjust. It just makes subtle adjustments to the picture to accommodate the additional light in a room. Let's bring that back in again bring it in right close and it's just showing it's high levels of light in the room. So very subtle changes happening in the background to accommodate this and to make the viewing experience as optimum as possible for you. Eye care wise, you also have low blue light options. So looking over here in the corner on the menu, if I flip between the different options, so initially that's the e-paper one, probably best for when you're reading another reading one but in color this time then you've got office web surfing and finally multimedia so subtle differences just to reduce the strain on your eyes now it's interesting seeing the e-paper mode because it takes it into a black and white mode like some of the e-books out there looking at the different hdr options on the monitor what i've done is play a video and play it in the different modes available and then stitch it all together so you can see all the modes side by side and you can see for yourself the different modes are very subtle in terms of video playback and in terms of brightness levels a good brightness levels are probably achieved on the game hdr i mode and the cinema hdr i mode performance isn't bad either now coming over to gaming and looking at the three modes available on this, I've got Fortnite's new season trailer playing on the PlayStation 5 and the differences here are a little bit more obvious as you can see and there is enhancements in the different modes but if I compare it to my LG OLED C9 TV, it can't compete. Not a good comparison I know as the OLED is far superior in picture quality but still it does do reasonably well. In terms of gaming, if you're an occasional gamer, it's not too bad with 4K picture quality at 60 frames per second and a five second response time. But for the hardcore gamers out there, you'd probably want to go with something with a faster response time and higher refresh rate to get a smoother gaming experience. Now, if you're lucky enough to own one of the next gen consoles, it's not going to be able to take full advantage of the higher refresh rates. So it wouldn't be able to make the most of the 120 frames per second you'd get on the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5. But in terms of general gaming experience, it's more than sufficient for the occasional gamer. Now in summary, you've seen this monitor in action and it is a really good all rounder and is a great monitor to buy. Positives wise, 4K picture quality is really good on here. It's nice, it's got the extra eye care options. I was really impressed by the 2.1 sound system on it. It's probably the best I've heard on a monitor. It's nice that it comes with a remote as well. It just gives you easy access to the options. I really do hate going to the controls behind the monitor and fiddling around with them as half the time I just end up pressing the wrong button and then eventually I'll get there. It's nice it has an audio output for headphones and you can also double this up and connect it to a separate speaker system. In terms of negatives, I wasn't too keen on the color of it. They describe it as gray, but some people say it's a bronze, but really it is just a brown and a little bit of an odd color for a monitor, I have to say. I wasn't really blown away by the HDR on there. It does a reasonably good job. It would have been nice if the monitor came with USB ports on there. And in terms of height adjustment, it isn't possible to adjust the height on there 
and you don't even have the ability to flip from landscape to portrait mode. That would have been really nice to have that additional functionality on there. So you could say this monitor is jack of all trades, but saying it's a master of none would be a little bit harsh as it does generally perform well. So there you go, I hope this video has helped anyone thinking of buying this monitor. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. Hang around for the end cards, I'll have a playlist on other monitors. So make sure you check that out. Smash that like button and drop me a comment. Let me know what you thought of this monitor. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.